Hello and welcome to Invest in Media. I'm John Sanders. And I'm Chris Jackson. And if you saw our last Money Tip segment on the UTD TV news, you know that we were talking about credit cards and your credit score. Now, most people have a lot of credit cards but don't know much about their credit score. And you see, we're going to go a little more in-depth into that and how your credit score is calculated, also how it affects your everyday life. Connor? Absolutely. Well, let's get started. I want to first start by explaining to you how your credit score is calculated. Um, now, there's some things on there that's going to be common sense, and there's going to be some factors on there in your mind that I've known. Common sense, the most uh, important part of your credit score is calculated by your payment history. Have you been late? How many payments do you usually make? That sort of thing. That's 35% of your credit history. The next largest chunk is 30% of your credit score. That's calculated by how much debt do you currently owe on your credit accounts. Um, if you carry balances over 15% of your credit limit, that will negatively impact any credit card account and your credit score in general. Um, the next most important factor in your credit score is basically how long have you had your credit card accounts for. The more established and more mature your credit card accounts are, the better it's going to help your credit score. Generally, any account older than seven years will greatly help your credit score, and any account younger than three years will also negatively impact your credit score. Another factor which makes up 10% of your credit score is how many times you applied for credit in the last year. Even applying for credit one time within a 12-month period will negatively affect your credit score. Whenever they pull your credit, it's considered a hit on your credit and knocks that rate down a little bit. Um, and the final 10% that determines your overall credit score is how many different kind of accounts you have. There's several different types of credit. There's revolving lines of credit, and there's fixed installment lines of credit. A uh, revolving line of credit is a credit card. It's open and you got 500 bucks. You can spend 200, you pay off 200, it's open, but your limit's 500. Installment is like a $3,000 personal loan, an auto loan, mortgage. Those are examples of installment credits. So you want to have a good portfolio, a good balance of both types of credit in your name in order to have the optimum credit score. But just remember, payment is still the most important thing on your credit. Make your payments on time and quite frankly, overpay your principal and pay as much as you can. Leave that credit card balance at zero. Don't take that finance charge. Sound pretty sound to you? Yeah, absolutely. And while we're talking about the different payments you have and paying them off, let's talk about the banks themselves. See, now we have bank accounts and credit cards from these banks. You generally have your checking and your savings account. Many people are familiar with this. In fact, I know most college accounts given by banks involve at least one checking and one savings. Now, basically your checking is what your money, where you generally spend all your money. Your savings generally cannot be touched unless you transfer it to your checking account. Now, the ratio you keep between these two accounts really impacts how much you organize your money and keep track of your account. Well, me personally, I like to keep most of my money in my savings account because in the event of identity theft or any other, well, sort of financial meltdown, I have most of my money untouched in the bank for as long as humanly possible. And in addition to that, I want to say that... Um if you do get a credit card from a financial institution like Wells Fargo, Chase, Capital One, you want to have bank accounts with them. I recommend that because of the ease of payment. A simple transfer online, you made your credit card payment, you paid the whole thing off. It's hard to forget, um, and it's really easy to do. There's no hassle about it, and it really dis it greatly decreases, uh, decreases those chances of that late payment, which would greatly negatively affect your credit score, especially you know this early in the game. Remember, it takes seven years to get a clean slate with that credit score. Seven years, that bad credit decision is going to live with you. Yes, and, well, when you want to keep track of all these different payments, back to the, well, you want to keep track of them. Back to the checking and savings, you generally want to keep it at a ratio where your checking will have however much you're spending for whatever term you're looking at. If you want to spend only enough for the week, you put a week's worth of money into your checking. If you want to do it for a month, a month into checking. And generally, you want to keep doing that and keeping track of your account to make sure nothing goes wrong. And my final money, my final money tips would be, uh, first of all, don't keep a credit card on you. You yeah. have planned purchases with your credit card. It's very tempting to use that free money, as they put it. Don't use a credit card unless you plan ahead. 
you want to keep those instant temptation purchases away. Um, and finally, if your money's in your savings account, make an effort and a habit of not pulling that money out of your savings account. Make an effort to save. Saving does pay off, and that's the first step to building wealth and later investing. Um, so that's all for tonight, folks. And if you're more, if you're interested in what we've talked about tonight or any other episode of Invest in Media, please be sure to join us in, in our normal investment club meetings in the library, 2.410, 3 p.m. on Sunday. We'll see you there. See you all there. Have a great night.